Now, as a nice sweet chocolate man, the first thing I'm gonna do the second that it snows and I have the opportunity to is I'm going to leave the country. And if you're watching this video now, I'm probably already on a plane on my way to Ghana, West Africa. Now, I have been collecting different pieces of gear that I wanna bring on this trip. So in today's video, I am gonna talk about everything and all the tech that I'm gonna bring with me on my trip to Africa. Now, this video is gonna be sponsored by Insta360 because there's a new addition to my kit that I actually haven't really used before. We'll get into it. Now, first thing is actually gonna be the backpack itself. This is gonna be a 35 liter bag from Gura Gear. Now, they sent me this about a year ago and I actually really haven't mentioned it on this channel, but I have been using it quite a lot. In fact, I've actually brought it pretty much everywhere with me. It has just enough space for me to fit in all the gear that I wanna bring on my trip. It does have five different pockets in it as well. It has two big pockets at the front that are divided in the middle like normal camera bags as well, but you also have front pockets as well so you can store things like cables and batteries or any sort of flat object that you could fit into there without obstructing the rest of your gear. You're also going to be able to fit in up to at least what I think is a 15 inch MacBook because I can fit my 14 in there just fine but it's going to be able to store everything, it's water resistant and this is a pretty solid backpack. Something that I wish I should have mentioned before in other videos but I've had it for about a year and it's actually been pretty solid ever since. Now the camera of choice that I'm obviously going to be making video content on is going to be the Sony FX3. Now, now, I did mention this in a previous video that I'm making a little bit of an upgrade from the Sony FX30 to the Sony FX3. Now, this is gonna be great for a couple of different reasons. I mentioned before that in Ghana, the sun's gonna set pretty early, so you don't wanna get caught with your pants down with having ISO performance that doesn't actually stack up to when it gets really dark really fast. But also, there's one other thing. If you haven't noticed, Africa can get quite hot, and one thing that might happen to some other cameras is you might have a risk of overheating. Now, Sony's been pretty decent in terms of their offerings in terms of protecting from overheating and having settings to adjust it, but one big thing on the Sony FX3 and the Sony FX30 is that it does have an internal fan. Right here on the side, you're going to see little slits that are going to help dissipate heat. So when I am shooting outside or I'm just getting some content for fun, even though I'm in a hotter place, it's going to be less likely this camera is going to overheat, which means I have longer shooting time. So this actually is a pretty good pickup for anything you're going to be traveling with, but if you can't afford this, the FX30 is just fine. Now in terms of the lens that's going to capture the majority of the content while I'm on this trip is going to be a throwback. Now this is the 24 to 70 G Master lens by Sony. Now this is just the version one, it's not the version two. I'm not made of money, but I am gonna try my best to use one lens and one camera for the majority of this trip. I actually didn't pack much else outside of this camera package. So I am gonna use a 24 to 70 to be pretty versatile whenever I'm in different shooting environments. And as well at F2.8, if you're in a country where it's gonna be quite sunny, like, well, like, like Africa, uh, it's actually gonna be pretty decent. In fact, I am gonna use some ND filters that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, but um, this is gonna be the lens I'm going to use on the FX3 the majority of the time. Now with obviously having a camera and a lens package, the next thing you're probably going to end up doing is you have to edit something. Now it's going to be hard for me to escape from work and I've accepted that I'm just going to have to balance the fact that I'm not going to work as much, but I am still going to do everything on my brand new M1 Max. Now this is a little bit of an older laptop. I didn't see a point in getting an M3. However, this is able to edit everything between red footage and stuff on my Sony camera. So whenever I'm going to be making content from this trip, I'm going to be using this guy. Now next is also going to be my loop deck ct now i don't know if you guys know this but after that sponsored video i still actually use this quite a bit in fact in terms of me batch recording videos and making sure that i always have content even when i'm traveling and i'm gone i actually use the speed editor in order to make my a-roll cuts a lot quicker to make color grading a lot quicker and overall to make the process that much easier now, what's also gonna make things a little bit easier as well, I'm also gonna put this somewhere too. I have an embarrassing amount of SSD drives. In fact, I do have this thing that I like to call my SSD keychain. Now, essentially, this is kind of simple to understand. I have a bunch of SSD drives, are all connected on their USB cables, and I basically kind of just Velcro tied. I Velcro tied pretty much all of them together. Now, the reason why I do this is because of the workflow, how I make videos as efficiently as possible. One thing I like doing is having an SSD drive of all the BTS from different shoots I've had for the last six months. Another drive I like having is one for every single export that I've ever done. And then the third thing that I like to do is I like to keep an active drive of any of the footage that I do have. So while I'm going to be on this trip, I'm going to have different days and a different assortment of different things on this drive, but I do like to keep that on one SSD drive because if I am working on a video actively, I know what drive that is going to be from. And the fact that when you're using SSD drives, it's a lot easier to edit from and it makes the process that much quicker. This looks a little bit ridiculous and embarrassing, but I will say that it does come in handy to make things efficient 
And also when I'm working from outside of home, I don't really have my NAS drive to rely on all the time. Oh, also brand, stuff like that. Uh, these are all Samsung T7 drives or T7 touches. They're all two terabytes. Uh, leave a link in the description down below, but these are gonna be the hard drives that I use. Now today's sponsor and also a new addition into my travel kit is gonna be the Insta360 Ace Pro. Now, if you haven't noticed, I've been talking about cinema cameras and mirrorless cameras and hybrid cameras, but I've actually never talked about action cameras. And that's, well, because I actually haven't used any. Not only does this camera record up to 8K in 24 frames a second, you're also gonna get things like a flip up screen just in case you're on the other side of your lens. You're also gonna get a couple of features internally that I haven't really seen before in some of my bigger cameras. Now, the robots haven't taken over yet, but you can use AI features in the Ace Pro. You could use AI editing to compile some of the clips that you have in a particular period of time, which actually is gonna be super handy, especially if I get random clips while I'm in Ghana and I don't feel like editing them after a long day of shooting. Now, I also got the Sony FX3 because I wanted to have a decent camera in low light, but you could also use the peer video feature that's gonna be on here to work in lower light situations. That way, if I do wanna use some action camera shots, I don't have to worry about what time of day it is. I'm still gonna have decent low light performance. Now, they also sent me a couple of accessories accessories for the Ace Pro as well, with their multi-mount arm and also this selfie stick that comes with the camera itself. Now, there's also gonna be a quick release plate on here to make it easy access and easy to maneuver around, which means that if I do wanna get some interesting shots while using the Ace Pro, I could just use any one of these two accessories and it's gonna be pretty easy to do. Now, I did have a chance to test this guy out before my trip. I actually used it on set as a behind the scenes camera. And I think once I come back from this trip, I might actually use it for that reason as well. Now, if you guys do wanna check out more about the Insta360 Ace Pro or other Insta360 products, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. This is gonna be a fun piece of kit and I have some interesting shots and ideas that I have with this guy. I definitely am going to be using this in a couple of different shots that you're going to see in future videos, which by the way, you guys should probably subscribe to, but I'm going to get back into it and talk about more things that are going to go in my travel bag before I get on my flight in like, like, like eight hours. Now, this might be a genius decision or an incredibly irresponsible one, but I'm actually not going to be bringing a tripod on this trip. In fact, I'm gonna be using my iFootage monopod. Now, I'm using it right now, so I'm just gonna play B-roll over so you can see what it looks like. However, I have been using this iFootage monopod since I got it back in April, and I've been using it for anything like shooting YouTube videos just like this one. I don't use a tripod shooting these anyways. I use it when I'm out traveling, when I wanna get photos, and I also wanna make sure that it's something that's easy to pack away and also easy to fit in my suitcase. Oftentimes I hear people saying they lost their tripod or got lost in their luggage, but breaking down a monopod and just putting it into my checked bag makes it a lot easier and it puts everything compact and leaves it in one place. Also, it holds up pretty sturdy. And if you've been watching any of these videos, it's more than likely on this monopod. Now, Polar Pro also left me some things as well. Now, the first thing I'm gonna bring with me, especially because I wanna maintain all my memory, is I'm actually gonna bring my Polar Pro Slate 2. Now, I've talked about this before, but this is just a really good way to make sure that all your memory is going to be secure. Now, going to a different country, you might have things that might fall out of your bag, you might get submerged in water, or this might fall out of your backpack and it gets run over by a truck. But what's handy about this is that it is waterproof, it's dustproof, it's crush proof, and you could hold up to six CF Express Type A cards in here and four SDs as well. Now, I was talking about ND filters before and how I was gonna mention them later in this video, and now is the greatest time in any to actually mention these guys. Now, I am gonna be using the Peter McKinnon VND Mist 2, which is on my camera right now. But Polar Pro finally did something we've all been waiting for, and they made some four x five filters. Now, these guys are gonna be really great to add different effects into your lens, that having to do a lot of work in post. And as well as if you pick up three of these, you actually get this mini map box for free. Also, these 4x5 filters are also gonna have a custom aluminum frame around them to protect them from drops or any accidentals that might happen while you're on set. You're also gonna get some of the usual suspects. If you wanna put on a mist filter, you can go ahead and do that. If you wanna use some of the anamorphic filters, I got the silver morphic myself. And as well as you have hard stop NDs. Now that's a big pickup because hard stop NDs actually help protect from color cast, which is actually great because the two pieces of glass aren't moving against each other because you only have to deal with one. They're easy to set up, they're pretty easy to find, and I'll leave a link down in the description down below, but it is a great pickup. So when I wanna use something like a matte box solution that I could switch filters on the fly, I could use a bunch of these guys. And for every Everything else I could just use my Peter McKinnon VND. Now, if you're a filmmaker that doesn't like to have fun, you could check out of this video right now because the next couple of items don't have a lot to do with filmmaking or photography. But one thing that I am gonna keep with me, especially on my flight, is gonna be, well, my Nintendo Switch, and mostly because I'm a gigantic Pokemon nerd. This flight's actually going to be a long one. I have a gigantic layover between going just from Toronto to New York to Ghana, so I'm gonna have to get some things to keep me busy, and using a Nintendo Switch and loading up a couple games is a great way to do that. I also went one further, and I actually started a completely new game on Pokemon Violet, so, 
I actually do have some work cut out for me. Now, another thing I am gonna do as well is I'm actually gonna bring my iPad. Now, I like to make notes for different things, especially if I have creative ideas and I keep them inside of my iPad. But one other thing that I'm also going to do is uh, I'm gonna try watching One Piece because I've never seen it and 1100 episodes is quite a commitment. However, if I'm gonna be on a 10 hour flight anyways, uh, I need some help falling asleep. No, I'm just kidding, that's a joke. I know there's a bunch of One Piece fans and you guys are gonna be mad about that, but I am actually gonna try my first watch through the entire series and try to get myself caught up. Now, the last item that's gonna go in my travel kit is actually gonna be an Apple AirTag. Now, this guy is a little bit self-explanatory. I throw this into a secret pocket into my backpack and that way if my bag ever goes missing, well, I know exactly where to find them. And you know, your boy's been boxing a little bit, so if I need to throw some hands to get my camera gear back, I'm more than willing to do that, although I don't really know if I'm a good fighter or not, so that actually might not work in my favor. However, an Apple AirTag is going to be super handy in order for you to find your stuff. You program this into your phone, it's pretty self-explanatory, use the Find My app, and you're going to be able to find anything in case you lose it. Now, that being said, that's pretty much all the gear and the tech that I'm gonna bring with me on this trip to Ghana. Now, I think I have just enough to be able to capture some casual content if I wanna show things like food or the place I'm gonna be in, or if I wanna make a sit down talking head video just like this, maybe with different scenery and maybe a couple new faces. Now, special shout out to Insta360 for sending me their Ace Pro. I'm gonna have a lot of fun getting some new action shots and getting some new angles, and you guys are gonna see them on the channel. Although I should probably talk about the other camera and lenses that I brought with me that I didn't mention in this video, but I have to press record because I got to edit this video and get it up for tomorrow. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.